thank the Minister for coming to speak to the House. I have received notice from the Minister for Education, Mr Peter Weir, that he wishes to make a statement. Minister. Thank you, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker. Uh, I would like to make a statement updating the Assembly on the second call to the School Enhancement Programme, SEP2. I launched a second call for, um, or a second call for applications to the uh, School Enhancement Programme on the 25th of January 2017. The applications received by the closing date were assessed under the uh, agreed protocol, and separate prioritised lists were created for primary schools, uh, for post-primary schools, and special schools. The protocol indicated that these prioritised lists would be held open uh, for two years, as the first tranche of projects was announced on the 8th of May 2018. The prioritised list will expire on Friday, the 8th of May 2020. I am therefore announcing a final tranche of 16 projects uh, to advance in design. The lists will then be closed in accordance with the protocol. There have been three tranches of projects uh, announced to date, and there are currently 58 schools being progressed under SEP2. Uh, design teams have been appointed for 20 of these projects, and work is ongoing to develop detailed designs uh, for those schools. The other projects are at earlier stages of scoping and design. However, uh, appointment of uh, design teams for these projects is likely to be delayed due to the ongoing COVID-19 restrictions. The delivery teams in the Department of Education uh, in the Department and the Education Authority are currently working to uh, capacity to progress these projects. Therefore, it is likely that the projects in the schools that I am announcing today will not be initiated before the 21-22 financial year. Despite that, I consider that there is value in making a further announcement before the lists expire to ensure a pipeline of SEP projects is maintained for the medium term, which will be welcome news for the 16 schools and also for design teams and ultimately the construction industry, especially in the current uh, difficult circumstances. The 16 schools in today's announcements will benefit from a total estimated investment of £40 million to enhance their facilities, improve the teaching and learning environment for each school community. The list comprises 10 primary schools, four post-primary schools and two special schools. The primary schools in alphabetical order are as follows. Christian Brothers Primary School, Armagh, Green Island Primary School, Hart Memorial Primary School, Portadown, Kilbride Central Primary School, Doak, Our Lady and St Patrick's Primary School, Downpatrick, St Bridget's Primary School, uh, Mayagall, Macrofelt, St Comgall's Primary School, Antrim, uh, St Patrick's uh, Primary School, Meadow, Newry, St Peter's Primary School in Moortown, Strandtown Primary School, Belfast. The post-primary schools are Ashfield Boys High School in Belfast, uh, Belfast Royal Academy, uh, Carrick Fergus Grammar School, uh, Clowna Junior High School, Portadown, and the two special schools are Highcroft School in Newton Abbey and Clifton School in Bangor. Uh, SEP2 is a significant programme which would deliver much needed capital investment in 74 schools across the state. The breakdown of those are 43 primary schools, 19 post primary schools, and 12 special schools. Typical projects being progressed within the programme include the provision of new teaching blocks to accommodate additional pupils, or to reduce the reliance on temporary accommodation, or refurbishment of existing classrooms to address substandard uh, or constrained teaching uh, spaces. SEP projects have an upper limit of four million, uh, so it is important that this investment is focused on addressing the greatest need of in each individual schools. And the delivery teams will consult extensively within each school to identify the de deficiencies and agree the priorities for investment uh, within the SEP funding envelope of four million. While 74 schools will receive SEP funding, I am aware that there are many other schools across the diverse schools estate which are in need of capital investment. Uh, officials are continuing to undertake preparatory work in advance of an announcement of new major works projects uh, to advance in design, and I hope to return to the Assembly to make that announcement in the coming months. The Minor Works Programme will also continue to progress the highest priority schemes. Improving the school estate is one of my priorities, and in the current unprecedented and in difficult uh, times. I hope this announcement will send a strong signal to the local construction industry that the Department of Education is planning for the future and is committed to supporting the local economy through delivery of my department's capital programme. My department's capital programme aims to ensure that all our children and young people are educated in school facilities which are safe, 
secure and fit for purpose, enabling them to receive the quality education experience required to help them uh, fulfil their potential. This announcement today represents another strand of the overall capital programme and indeed marks the last announcement of SEP2 projects. Uh, over my term as Education Minister, I will review progress on the 74 announced projects and, sub uh, and subject to satisfactory uh, progress and available budget. I will consider if there should be a third call for applications to SEP, that would be an SEP3, as part of the overall capital investment strategy. Thank the Minister for his statement. Again, if I remind members, uh, the shorter and sharper we keep it, the more people will get called. I call first the Chair of the Committee uh, for Education, Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement, which will be a, a must-needed boost to our education sector. particularly welcome investment in my own constituency with Strandtown Primary School and Ashfield Boys High School, which are, are good examples of the scale of investment needed to replace mobile facilities and dining facilities in particular. Um, it will be a boost to morale for our, our education sector, but one of the, the key concerns for our education sector at this moment in time is the outstanding matter of uh, payment for substitute teachers. Is the Minister able to provide the Assembly with an update on that particular matter? Well, yeah, I appreciate obviously there's a bit of latitude given to the obviously this announcement on the school enhancement programme, but uh, in terms of substitute teachers, we're continuing to work with that and work with the Department of Finance. As indicated, we want to try and get the best possible package, and if that is to be achieved, it requires something beyond what simply is available within the Department of Education. There is ongoing work, and I appreciate the frustrations and concerns that are out there. Uh, I think we find ourselves in a difficult uh, position. Uh, I note that, as far as I'm aware, in the Republic of Ireland, there's no particular provision has been given uh, for casual substitute teachers, other than simply to say if there is a situation in which a, a school needs a substitute, which is the same as here, they can use a substitute. Uh, in England, the situation is such that, again, the Department of Education themselves are not uh, directly involved in any levels of payments, but because a lot of the teachers work through agencies, and the same as, as Train Wheels, the agency can furlough. That's not an option which is within the ambit of the Department of Education. And in Scotland, there is provision. However, we should also note that in terms of Scotland, the levels of pay that are there for substitute teachers are massively less uh, than what is available in Northern Ireland, to the extent that uh, the overall bill for substitute teachers in Scotland uh, is less than Northern Ireland, despite the fact that they are teaching more than twice the number of, of, of children. So that also needs to be borne in mind uh, when we're looking at comparators. But there is ongoing work. I would like to bring this as quickly as possible to a conclusion. I think the problem is, if I brought it to a conclusion immediately, without any level of assistance from outside, it would be a smaller package and a smaller level of support than it would be able to if there is assistance that can be provided uh, from beyond the department. Gentle reminder, the Minister's statement is about the School Enhancement Programme. Uh, so could questions relate to the School Enhancement Programme? Um, I call Mr William Humphrey. Well, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement to the House today, and I also thank the Minister for his ongoing dedication and hard work during this current crisis. I, I welcome the statement. This is good news for the education sector. It's also good news, as he has said, for the construction industry. I particularly welcome the announcement of the uh, enhancement for the Belfast Royal Academy. And I thank the Minister for his time taken to visit the school and meet with myself and the Principal Hilary Wood some months ago. Uh, can I ask the Minister, given the announcement today and the undoubted uh, demand that there is across the education sector in Northern Ireland. Can he inform this House if there will indeed be a third call in terms of the School Enhancement Programme? Well, there will be. Uh, I thank the member for his question. I am aware particularly of the member's uh, commitment, particularly in terms of Belfast Royal Academy and indeed to his other schools within, the, within his constituency. In terms of a third call, um, as I said, there will be a sort of a review of progress. To some extent, we are in quite a fluid situation. And I can have a good side to it and a bad side to it. Um, the fact that in terms of education spend on capital, there is a mixture of minor works, SEP and major works, means that there can be a level of movement between those, uh, between those, those that side of it. I think it is unlikely that uh, in terms of an SEP, a, a third call, uh, we have obviously completed this bit and there is work to be ongoing in, in relation to that. I want to make sure that the flow of, of um, projects is, is kept sufficient. 
It is unlikely that there will be a third call uh, before 2022, but we will keep the issue um, under uh, review. And indeed, I think periodically, school enhancement programme across the board for the last number of years have actually worked reasonably well for schools. And so, therefore, I think it is a tool to which either myself or successors will, will uh, want to sort of bear in mind, because I think it can deliver very effectively for schools. I call Ms. Karen Mullen. Last can quarter. Minister, I thank you for your statement, and uh, thank you. I, I welcome your update on the school enhancement uh, programme for the 16 su successful schools in their school communities. It will give a welcome boost to their morale at this time. Minister, before this pandemic hit, I believe the department had nearly completed a round of capital applications, and in your statement, you do say you will return with that announcement in the coming months. Can you give us a clear indication of when that will be? I don't I thank the, the member for her comments. Um, I, I don't have an exact time frame. I suspect that I'll be wanting to liaise with officials. I think we're probably looking, I suspect, at an announcement in the autumn as regards, regards that. Obviously, uh, in terms of the, the summer term, with less than two months to go. Uh, and therefore, it's also going to be factored in against where we are. I know the executive as a whole is looking at, at how it can help the uh, construction industry, how it can profile capital. Uh, having said that, major capital spend tends to take quite a long period of time. So, for example, if there was an announcement on a range of schools in terms of capital, it would be a number of years before those were in a position to, to progress. I hope to make that as soon as possible, but I will be liaising with officials on the timing and the detail and what is available uh, within that. Mr Daniel McCrossan. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister as well for his statement and the Minister's ongoing engagement with members of this House throughout this crisis and in the way in which he responds to us so openly. Also, Minister, I would like to follow on from what other members have said in welcoming this enhancement programme. It will come as a huge benefit to the school estate. As we know, the school estate is in badly, in badly needed of investment. Uh, and it has been long awaited, and I welcome that it is a priority for yourself and your confirmation of it. Given that uh, the school uh, classroom has been replaced by remote learning, uh, Ms. Minister, uh, from home, uh, I am just wondering uh, what your thoughts are on the figures in terms of people who, of those children who are engaging online. They are quite low and concerning. There are reasons for it, but I am just wondering what the Minister is doing in relation to that to ensure that no child in this crisis falls through the gaps in the absence of the classroom. Minister, if you just. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. The Minister's statement is about the School Enhancement Programme. <laughs> now, um, if the Minister wants to respond to that, but he's under no obligation to. Uh, I will take it in the generosity of spirit of the, the question and saying that in enhancing every experience within uh, the school, uh, the, uh, obviously we want to ensure that, that all children are given levels of access. There, there is ongoing work, and I know uh, there will be some degree of, of update um, tomorrow. One of the areas I think is working with the EA. I think there has been a level of misconception that, for example, in terms of um, school IT equipment, that uh, that is, although it's compatible with C2K, it's not simply limited to what can happen within the school. So there will be an opportunity. I think EA will be clarifying uh, with schools. There's an opportunity in terms of existing kit that can be used. I think there's a wider context that will need to be looked at in terms of the wider capital budget, because it is also the case, and depending on how this rolls out over a period of time, uh, that there may need to be a level of investment and procurement in terms of uh, kit, which is not, on the grand scheme of things, should not be overly expensive. And therefore, there may be an examination about whether there is any need for a small amount of reprofiling of the capital budget this year, for instance, to be able to um, provide that. What we are experiencing, I know the member is, is aware of that, um, is it is less frequent that it is a question of there is nothing at all in the House. It is the fact that where you are getting pressure of competing demands, for instance, uh, for kit within that. But also, I suppose, and the member being from West Tyrone will be quite well aware of this as well, there is also an onus because there will be a range of geographical locations uh, which, um, with the best will in the world, you could provide all the kit uh, that you want. And because of the issues still around broadband as part of the rollout on that, it will not, a piece of IT equipment will not be of any benefit to that. So there is an onus, particularly in those schools, uh, to identify as well. And where there is a, a substitute situation of, for instance, uh, largely speaking, paper copies of things, I think that is also going to be factored in uh, as well in terms of that level of remote learning. But it is a work in progress. It is an ongoing issue. Mr Steve Aiken. 
Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And first of all, uh, I'd like to declare an interest as a member of the Board of Governors of Kilbride Central Primary School and as a parent of a member of my young children at Kilbride Central Primary School. I'd like to thank the Minister for the much-needed investment in all the 16 schools, but in particularly for the three in my constituency, Kilbride, St McCongles and Hillcroft. And also I'd like the Minister to commit to where possible for expediting the construction and the work in these particular schools, because I think it's vital for our construction sector and what we're trying to do. Thank you, Minister. Well, look, there will be as part of that, and I thank the member, and obviously uh, in making this announcement, I have very much the member in mind when, uh, uh, when uh, announcing the, the, the list. Um, but in all seriousness, yes, I think there will be work that will be ongoing. Now, the process as such will be that the next stage will be then discussions between officials and the schools. There is obviously a bit of delay because of the, the COVID situation, because the way the process works, a school will make um, a level of assessment about what it particularly needs. It will have been scored against that. In most cases, that will be what will happen, but it will, in all cases, whenever that discussion takes place, it will not necessarily be that what the school puts as its priorities is considered objectively as being the priority. So there will be a little bit of work that will need to be um, going on there. I think the executive as a whole is, and is trying to work, and I don't think this is breaching any level of confidentiality, will be, be looking to see how it can support the construction industry, how it can also ensure that its priorities are aligned with, it, with the capital budget. Uh, and recognising as well that the particular short-term pressures that are there from a capital point of view, uh, you know, in terms of this year's budget, there will be some level of impact because of the level of disruption that has taken place already. There will be some level of ongoing um, disruption as, uh, as construction firms comply with social distancing regulations. But we should realise that particularly the announcement today will be something effectively for the future. So that shouldn't be particularly impacted, other than, if, if you like, the pipeline being slightly slowed in the short term. But I think, as much as possible, I think we're looking uh, both what can be done directly in Northern Ireland, but looking also at international examples to see uh, if there's any areas that can be expedited, if there are actions, for instance, in terms of issues around procurement that can be made easier. I, I think. Uh, we're all acutely aware, it's, it's particularly true in the education sector, but across the executive, I think we're all acutely aware of the extent to which the, the broad construction industry is not just a major employer in Northern Ireland, but acts as a, an engine for the, the overall growth in terms of stimulating the economy. So I, I think on an executive-wide basis, that's something that, is, is, uh, that the executive as a whole is acutely aware of and wants to respond positively to. Mr Thomas Buchanan. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for the uh, statement before the House today. <clears throat> Perhaps you can clarify how the um, educational programmes, how they were selected, uh, the schools that are in your, uh, uh, in your speech today, and also to push the board out a little bit. Oma High School is awaiting an enhancement programme on, uh, for a new school on the campus site in Oma. Maybe you can give us some indication when that will commence. Right. Uh, well, in terms of the individual issue of, of Oma Academy, I'm not aware of the, the exact uh, details. Uh, I'm supposed to say all politics is local, and I suppose whenever you get school enhancement programme announced, that's particularly the case. Uh, look, as indicated in terms of major capital bills, which clearly go beyond SEPs, there will be announcement in the forthcoming uh, months, so those will be assessed against that. Uh, the member asks in terms of the, the process uh, side of that. The process, I suppose, is, is fairly lengthy. So a call was put out. Uh, then, in terms of that, to, this is effectively to advance in terms of uh, design. Uh, this, the, whenever that, that uh, it was judged then against the protocol and the criteria, uh, which, for example, deals with issues around where it's helping with uh, area planning, where it's helping to meet unmet need, and um, where it's essential, quite essential to address significant and substandard accommodation. There's then what is effectively called a gateway check, which is to ensure that, that the school is regarded as being sustainable. Um, and those that pass that, and I think there were something like 165 applications uh, with that, you know, it will also consider issues around spit site operations, conditions of existing uh, accommodation. What has then happened is that officials will then, and this dates back two or three years, uh, officials will then have done an assessment and then within each of three categories, primary, post-primary and special schools, and ranked each of them. There's a scoring mechanism. They'll be all scored individually, but ranked within that. So that, if you like, a primary school is competing against another primary school, effectively, to where it is in the, in the place. And that list has then gone strictly down as each 
tranche has been able to be released, uh, there has been then a combination of um, schools from each of those three categories then have, have fulfilled uh, part of that. Um, I think there's also, uh, in terms of the process, there's also been a, uh, one of the impacts has also been on social issues. So, for example, the number of children with SEN uh, or in the SEN registers, those taking free school meals will also be one of the impacts in terms of the, the broad level of, of assessment. Uh, before I call Ms Catherine Kelly, I have an incomplete list here, so if members are wanting to ask a question, please do try to indicate to me in some way, either by approaching the table or just rising in your place, and I'll, I'll add you to the list and make sure everyone gets called. I call Ms Catherine Kelly. Mayor, good luck, Ken Corlea. Uh, thank you, Minister, for your statement. Um, we are well aware of the additional pressures that the economy will face as a con consequence of COVID-19. So announcements like this, as you have pointed out, are a very positive signal. Given that the department may need to calibrate its budget as the COVID-19 situation progresses, can I ask the minister when he will be able to give us an update on a timeline for work to begin and complete on Stril Shared Education Campus? In terms of the specifics, uh, obviously we want it. It's important and they that, if you like, the work on Stroul happens as quickly as, as possible in relation to that. Uh, and so I think I've signed off on a range of things in, in relation to that. I'll, I'll get back to the member with the, the details on that. Uh, there is particular timeframes given the fact that, both in terms of the fact that it's tied in with Fresh Start uh, money, but also the fact that the longer there is any levels of delays within Stroul and in, in terms of uh, spend on the ground. There is a, a construction inflation that is likely to happen that will be there. So, believe me, I think it is important that, that this is the biggest single certainly education project that has ever been undertaken um, in the history of the state. Uh, so, there is a level of priority. There will be, I think, levels of delays that have been there uh, because of the, the COVID situation. But in terms of the detail, uh, I will be happy to get back to the member with uh, detail as soon as possible. Call Mr. Harry Harvey. Well, Deputy Speaker, thank you, Minister, for your statement. Minister, is there money in the budget to ensure these projects actually happen? Thank you. Uh, well, yes. Uh, I mean, as indicated in terms of the, the cost of these, it's, uh, an SEP project is effectively a mid-range project, which runs between half a million at a maximum and four million. Sorry, as a minimum, and four million um, uh, at, a, at a maximum. So. Uh, if you like, there will then be a, a scoping out exercise. The department will ensure that the agreed project provides that value for money. But it should be remembered that, that in terms of this capital budget, um, there is an assumption of, broadly speaking, a capital budget moving forward. In terms of the, the timescale of this, it is such that, that um, even in terms of design stage, it, it is doubtful whether there be anything directly happening as regards to today's announcement. Uh, in this year's financial budget. So whatever level of disruption that, that would be there in terms of the COVID situation. But there has been a, a level of ongoing budget, and there's the opportunity for variations between SEPs, between uh, the minor works and the major capital works. And part of this is to ensure then that we have that, as we move forward, that, that flow between that. But anything that, that's announced is likely to take a period of time, but it can be guaranteed that it will happen as a result of that. And there is, therefore, moving forward, the money that will be in the budget for it. Mr. Justin McNulty. Minister, I can thank the Minister for his statement and for his answers thus far. Minister, I welcome this announcement today, and especially for Christian Brothers Primary School in Armagh and for St. Patrick's Primary School in the Meadow. Um, when do you think, Minister, there will be boots on the ground in terms of uh, commencing construction? And can you also commit to ensuring that those schools who, that have not received have not been successful in this tranche of funding, that they will be, say, have investment released in the not too distant future. Thank you, Minister. I suppose maybe taking the two, in, well, maybe take the first bit first. The aim would be, I suppose, that the uh, projects will probably be initiated in the 21 22 year financial year with detailed design work, uh, probably taking place the following year. We're talking probably about four years ahead before these will actually there will be the direct bricks on the ground of, of construction within that. It is about the fact that, in terms of the pipeline, there will be others ahead of that. But it will move as, as quickly as possible. And again, if additional resources are available in terms of the capital side, that, that can move. It's, this is about ultimately trying to give certainty to those schools 
uh, and indeed, you know, so the completion will be a little, a little way off in this particular case. That would be quicker than a, a full capital build. He mentions in terms of other schools, directly speaking, the SEP programme on the current assessment has effectively ended with, with this week. So the, there was initially, I think, a total of, uh, well, there were 59 in total, that shrunk to 58 as one withdrew to be part of a wider capital side of it, and 16 today. So there are 74 schools that are benefiting through the SEP programme. Other schools uh, will then be assessed when there is a call for a new SEP programme, but also some of those may be actually seeking a full capital build and may be part of the overall um, situation as, as uh, regards that. I, I suppose uh, while it is the case um, that uh, there is no guarantee of any school necessarily getting from a, a fresh call. Um, the fact that there has been then improvements in a range of, of schools will mean that the chances for other schools will then increase also. There, there's a knock-on effect uh, with that. And if you have, while there is no bar on any school applying for a second SEP, and in some cases may well need it and may well get it, in many cases what it will mean is that a range of schools which are ahead of those currently on the list will have effectively moved out of the way, so that will give that greater opportunity. Mr Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement, and that is welcome news for many schools. As you all know, Minister, uh, it is well documented that um, for improving pupils and teachers' mental health that the environment needs to be therapeutic, and whilst there is some good news uh, for many schools, uh, are there any particular worries that you would have for any schools that have missed out in this tranche? Uh, and have you any idea of, as the member here has pointed out, of the programme moving forward after this tranche? Please? Well, I've indicated, I mean, look, there is always, uh, with the level of success that is there for particular schools, there's always a level of disappointment for schools that, that haven't gotten. I appreciate that. There will be further opportunities, both in terms of the major capital build, but also then there will be future SEP programmes. But one of the things that I note, um, it's been very noticeable, it's, it's interesting, anybody that visits schools will see particularly schools that are built um, over the last sort of 10 or 15 years, for instance, uh, will notice some of the impact on design that are there, in part to try and create that, that positive environment. Some of it about use of space, use of light, for instance, and I think incorporating those sort of levels of thinking can be quite useful. Part of the element of this, and while uh, there will be individual, um, you know, there'll be individual actions taken on each of the, of the schools, for quite a number of the schools there's a common factor which is saying that the school was built at a stage when uh, the size of classrooms are below what is the current handbook suggests. And part of these will actually be about providing expanded classroom, be providing expanded space which in itself can, from a design point of view, can create levels of light and, and, and good feeling. I mean, look, there is a much wider piece, both within schools and, and society, as obviously the members is acutely aware uh, of the need to be able to tackle um, issues around mental health. Uh, and albeit in maybe a small way of school design can actually help uh, as part of that broader holistic process, then I think it's something that people will be bearing in mind when it comes to the detailed design work that, that will happen around uh, particular schools. Mr Jonathan Buckley. Speaker and I would also like to join with members in welcoming this statement. It's, it's indeed a, a pleasant experience in the House, given what we have been hearing over this past few months regarding COVID-19. Um, I particularly want to welcome the two uh, additions in my own constituency, namely the Hart Memorial and Clowney Junior High School. Uh, as has been mentioned, this is not only to the benefit of parents and teachers and pupils themselves, but indeed the wider school community and also the wider construction industry. So it's indeed welcome news. Would the Minister perhaps have at hand any further detail in relation to the two uh, school bids from the Hart Memorial and Clowney Junior High School in my own constituency and what they entailed? Well, I thank the member. I know the member has been similarly been, has been very assiduous in the support of those, those schools. Um, at present, the way it works out, as indicated, that the schools will provide effectively what they see as the priorities. So there is a caveat to be added to anything I say here, on the ground that the next stage will be that meeting between departmental officials and the schools to scope out what needs to be done. But to give a little bit of an indicator of, of um, in relation to the two schools, for Hart Memorial, uh, the school lacks required accommodation for a 14-class based primary school. Uh, for example, a number of the classrooms are undersized, there's no resource area, there's lack of storage and traffic management, and those would be, I think, what the school sees as the priorities there. 
uh, for Clonard Junior High in Portadown. Again, it's, um, it will sort of be, I suppose, aiming to, to look at the deficiencies in relation to the DE handbook. And again, and there will be a similarity with a lot of these schools, uh, issues around undersized classrooms. At the moment, uh, Clowney Junior doesn't have a sports hall or indeed related to fitness suites. There's a lack of uh, sports pitches. And again, there's issues around the traffic management um, and car parking issues. And obviously, part of this will with a lot of schools will also be looking at where the level of safety is for, uh, for pupils and staff within that. And again, that will look not simply to the building, but also externally in terms of those, those work that can be done. Mr. Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And maybe at the outset, I declare an interest as a member of Priory Integrated College and Hollywood's Board of Governors. Um, I thank uh, the Minister for his statement and also the announcement, particularly in relation to Clifton Special School in Bangor. I just want to see if the Minister could detail a bit more in terms of what progress is being done in terms of progressing special school area planning. Thank you. Well, in terms of specifically in terms of Clifton, uh, I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, and obviously the member is also aware that in terms of priority is, is one of the projects that's moving ahead in terms of the fresh start side of things. Again, whether things have moved a little bit slower because of the, the COVID situation, but again, that's, that's guaranteed. Uh, in terms of the broad area with uh, special schools, again, there's been a level of investment uh, that is in there. In many cases, Low Clifton is, in terms of the new build, is one that is uh, physically one of the newer uh, special schools within Northern Ireland, um, the uptake in terms of number of places in, has increased significantly in, in recent years. So again, uh, the, what we're looking at there and what they've they put in is issues in terms of deficiencies in terms of the building handbook. So for instance, undersized classrooms and library, inadequate toilet facilities, uh, lack of mobility bays, storage for heavy equipment, and again, traffic um, management issues and weather play facilities. There will be, if you like, particular challenges that are there sometimes with special schools, which is why uh, in terms of on SEP there has always been this um, three-stage division of primary, post-primary and um, the special schools, because there will be a different level of assessment that needs to be put in within that. Again, as part of the process, while that has been identified as being the key priorities for, for Clifton, there will then be a, a sequence of work that will go on between officials and representatives of Clifton to then scope out what actually needs to be done, uh, agree that, and then move to the design stage. Mr. Colin McGrath. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And uh, I welcome the statement from the Minister today and the inclusion uh, of monies for Our Lady and St. Patrick's School in Downpatrick. And I hope that it's a good precursor to maybe monies for a full rebuild of that merged school, uh, which will help to address the lack of facilities, but also deal with the terrible traffic issues that there are in Edward Street outside uh, that school. And following on from the previous question, um, would the Minister give some comfort to those special schools that have limited capacity, because many of them have a list uh, a considerable list of, of pupils that need to get entry to them, but they just don't have the additional facilities. So, would it be possible for some special enhancement programme for the special sector to increase their capacity? That, that has been as part of the thing, as indicated probably in the previous, um, uh, the previous answer. Uh, that is why, effectively, there is a separate section in terms of school enhancement programme that is for, for special schools, so the particular needs will try to be addressed. Uh, you know, as with, with all things, if, if there are actions that can be taken, sometimes that will be, uh, and I suppose where I can differentiate here, where a school has got an SEP, that will mean that effectively uh, it will not get an SEP and within a period of time uh, the, uh, a full rebuild. So I suppose to some extent it's, it's effectively an either or uh, on that basis. What it doesn't disqualify is that if in the meantime there is minor works that are required, uh, and particular individual actions that, that are needed to require to provide that level of facilitation, that can still carry on at the same time. Call Ms. Joanne Bunting. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Uh, and I'm very grateful to the Minister for this announcement um, and the strong signal that it is of his commitment to the educational environment uh, of our children. As you would expect, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I'm particularly delighted to hear the announcement for Strandtown Primary and for Ashfield Boys who are richly deserving of this programme and who have worked extremely hard to get it. Um, Strandtown is unique in Northern Ireland in terms of its school, and Ashfield Boys has, uh, is always oversubscribed and is an extremely popular school in my constituency. Um, so, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, this announcement will make an enormous difference to these schools and their pupils. 
I note that the Minister has made mention that there will be a, a forthcoming announcement about, um, about major works. Um, and I'm wondering if the Minister is in a position at this stage to outline how that scheme will differ from this one um, and what potential differences there are within the criteria. In terms of the detail of that, that's still to be brought to a point of fruition. I suppose the, principal, the two principal differences is, uh, is, first of all, on the grounds of what constitutes a major work. And so, therefore, within the system, effectively, things are graded into three categories. Anything below half a million, and this is particularly driven by health and safety issues, will be counted as a minor works uh, situation. School enhancement programme um, is projected to be between a minimum of half a million and four million. Um, and I suppose the other principal difference between school enhancement programme and major works is for a school enhancement programme, it is always uh, effectively a change to the school on its existing site. So it might be, in, as mentioned in a number of the, the cases, where there is uh, a rebuild of some classrooms to make that. It may well be, for instance, there's additional classrooms to replace temporary facilities, for example. It may be that, uh, and we've seen in the past, that, uh, for instance, say at a post-primary, you may get a science block or a sports hall or something of that nature which is pitched within that. Uh, essentially, for um, anything that is of a major works, but as a minimum, it would require above four million. And quite often, particularly in post-primaries, that could stretch to 20, 25, 30 million. It's, it can be quite large. But, but as part of that, then, there is a requirement, because that is entirely a new build. It will take a lot longer. And as part of the process, uh, there will be a, a site search will have to be in which, as part of that, um, for a particular school, there will be examination. This will apply, for example, I know in a number of the, the fresh start uh, cases, where as part of that, uh, there will be an examination of what land is available, um, a range of options. It will then business case on, the, on that bit. And uh, even, even if the option is there of them doing it on the current site, there will have to be consideration of other locations. And it may well be that the school, as well as a major works, will have to move to a different uh, location or premises. Uh, that, in and of itself, both the scale and also the fact that that adds a layer of complexity and time, means that, generally speaking, that for a major works, it's not only much more substantial in terms of money, but will tend to take quite often considerably longer than it would be for an SEP. SEPs, while they may be of a certain level of disruption uh, through COVID, there may be a certain level of disruption because you know, we fit it in, if you like, as many SEPs as we possibly can. But generally speaking, those will be delivered at, at a quicker time rate than would be for a major capital bill. Before I call the next person, anyone that hasn't asked a question and who wishes to, if they please indicate, I'll make sure they get asking their question. The next person is Ms. Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement and um, for the announcement of much needed investment and, in particular, the commitment for Clifton School in Bangor. As the Minister will be aware, there are a number of schools in Northern Ireland, but specifically in North Down, with outstanding needs. So, could you confirm that minor works will not be affected by this SEP and outline how you intend to address the issue of minor, minor works to enhance schools? In terms of, in terms of minor works, there is always a flow between those. And indication in terms of time scale, I have indicated that we are looking at uh, design teams starting, I think, within about a year's time to be looking at some of these issues. So there is no sort of certainly immediate impact, and indeed consistently over the last number of years there has been a flow between, major, between the major capital works, the SEPs, and the minor works. Uh, it may well be, and there will be, depending upon circumstances, levels of movements between budgets, and some will be on the basis of how much, it's quite often a certain level of knock-on as to how much can actually be delivered in terms of some of the major works. But it is undoubtedly the case that Minor works, because they tend to be a little bit more agile in, in their nature, can sometimes then fill a void, uh, which, if some of the major works are not able to progress as quickly as possible, can do that. Uh, obviously, again, in terms of minor works, there was a call a um, considerable time ago. Uh, the volume of um, minor works that were identified was such that it was massively more than, than could be met. And the other thing with minor works will be um, and I know a number of members will be aware of this. To some extent, maybe the analogy is perhaps with the, the housing executive list. You can be on a particular place on the minor works. If there is then something which is identified as an emergency situation, particularly a health and safety <coughs> situation, which maybe wasn't part of a previous call, but is urgent to be dealt with, that, that urgency will 
supersede sometimes those that will be on the, the list. But there's a continual flow, I think, of, of um, minor works that will be there. Also, I'll add to that, although it's not a capital issue, will also be the issue around uh, school maintenance. And to some extent, if maintenance can take place, sometimes it, it obfuscates the need for particular capital uh, actions to be taken as well. So it's about, there's a certain amount of, I wouldn't say blurring of the lines, but uh, a level of interaction between minor works and maintenance as well. Thank you, Minister. That concludes questions upon the Minister's statement. Um, if members would just take 60 seconds just to allow the Ministers to change over.